Hi, boys and girls. Today we are going to be making a pop art pie slice inspired by Wayne Thiebaud. So the first thing I'll need is paper and a pencil to sketch out my design. And we're going to be drawing the pie slice so that it looks three-dimensional. So I'm going to start with the top of the pie. So I'm going to kind of draw up here near the, the top of my page. I'm going to start with a diagonal line. I don't want my diagonal line to go too close to the top. At the end of my diagonal line, I'm going to create a curved line. So it looks like my um, pie slice is curved on the end here. And then another diagonal line connecting the tip to the edge of my curve. Now up here on the top of this curve, I'm going to create the crest. So I'm going to draw kind of a bumpy line that goes all the way across the top and then connects. When I draw the side of the slice, that's just going to be a rectangle. So I'm going to draw two vertical lines straight down. I want to make my pie slice nice and thick here, and then a line straight across. Now I'm going to add a few more things here, and I'm going to add the edge of my crest. So I'm going to start um, kind of here, a little closer to the edge here, and draw a second vertical and horizontal line to make my crest look a little bit thick. Now I'll need to kind of erase out here so my crest looks like it's all connected as one piece. And next on the inside of my pie here on the side, I'm going to add some layers. And you can add as many as you'd like. I'm just going to add two lines to create three different layers in there. And then finally, you can add some toppings to your pie. And because we're making pop art, this does not have to be realistic. It can be fun, colorful, silly. So I'm going to start by adding some kind of wavy lines up here to create a shape, kind of like whipped cream, or you could even make it kind of like drippy, like it's coming down the sides. That'll make your pie look a little more 3D. Now, because my drips went over the edge of the pie, I need to erase out all of those spots so that it looks like it's overlapping the edge of my pie. Now I'm going to draw a few more things as my toppings. I'm going to add a cherry up here. And when I add the stem, I want to make sure that I'm drawing shapes, not just lines. And my stem overlapped two shapes, so I'll need to erase those out. So it looks like my stem is on top. And I'm going to add, let's see, I'm going to add some blueberries here too. And I'm making all of these shapes overlap each other. So I have to erase out and make it look like one object is in front and one is behind. I'm going to add some details, some blueberries here. And lastly, I'm going to add um, some texture or details here in my um, sec the sections that I added in my layers here. I'm actually going to make my middle layer here look like it's kind of drippy too. And I, when I come back through here, I'm going to be um, adding some value to make those drips look 3D. So I'm going to erase that out so it looks like it's kind of dripping from that middle section to the bottom section. And then I could add some, some kind of neat patterns or shapes, lines in here so that when I color later, I can add more colors, more, more details just so that my, my sections can all be different. Now, um, next I'm going to add a plate. And because I'm looking at this pie slice from the side, my plate isn't going to be a circle. It's going to be an oval that kind of wraps around. And again, I'm going to practice that overlapping. And I'm just going to lightly sketch in an oval. That's going to be the inside edge of my plate. I'm going to add a second oval for the outside edge of my plate. And yours might go off the page. Mine did a little bit here. That's okay. Last thing I'm going to add is a horizon line. So I'm just going to draw a horizontal line going behind my pie. All the way across, that will look like the edge of the table or wherever the, the surface that my pie is sitting on meets kind of the wall there. Next, I'm going to go through and I'm going to add some outlines. Now, I'm going to use two different markers. I'm going to use a Sharpie pen and I'm going to use a Sharpie marker. And if you don't have Sharpie pens, you could always just use a regular pen. Um, but I want to create thin outlines on a lot of my shapes and then thicker outlines just around the outside. So I'm going to start with my pen and just go through and outline all of my pencil lines.
And because my pen is so thin and small, I might miss some pencil lines, and that's okay. When I'm finished, I'll go back and erase them. And again, if you do not have a Sharpie pen or a thin Sharpie at home, you could definitely use a ballpoint pen. Um, a felt tip pen would work best. If you have something that's, or like a skinny marker, just a Crayola marker. And if you don't have any of that, you could even use just a black colored pencil. So for this first step, I'm outlining all of my shapes and lines, everything I drew in pencil. I'm actually gonna completely erase all of my pencil when I'm done. So I'm even outlining my plate and my horizon line. So now that I'm finished, I want to go through and erase any pencil lines that are still showing because when I color, I don't want to um, trap that pencil in there by coloring over it or smear it. I'm going to make my colors look kind of gray. Now that I've got my artwork all cleaned up, I am going to be ready to start adding my color. All right, we are ready to start adding color, and I'm going to be using crayons for this, although you could use color pencils or even markers if that's what you have at home. So on this project, we're going to be focusing on lots of bright colors and adding some kind of fun pops of color on the outlines and doing a little bit of shading as well. And it doesn't really matter which colors you put where, um, so you can pick whatever colors you'd like. So I'm going to start by uh, adding some color to my drippy areas here so I can show you how I'm going to kind of shade those. So I'm going to choose my color and I'm going to start by coloring on the edges and I'm going to color really dark. And um, this will, once I, once I add the other shading, the light and medium values, it will give the illusion that uh, these drips are kind of three-dimensional. So I'm going to color kind of a dark edge here along the bottom. And then I'm going to go back through and kind of in a circular motion here, I'm going to color a slightly lighter value, like a medium value, next to that dark value. And I'm coloring in a circle because it, it helps blend the crayon a little bit. And then lastly, I'm going to kind of fill in the rest with a really light value. And I don't want stripes. I do want my values to blend. Having that lighter value kind of in the center of the drip makes it look like it's round, like it's kind of pooled up in that area. And here on my back edge, I can just add like a slight a slight shadow there since it's not seeing the edge of the drip and really just seeing the top. Now, if you have toppings like I do here, you could even add a little cast shadow under those to make them look like they're kind of sitting in that cream or goo or whatever you've decided that it is. Now, I'm going to do something to make it pop even a little more. I'm gonna pick another color and I'm gonna add kind of some bright, colorful shadows actually on the pie itself around my dripping goo. And you can actually do this with more than one color. And that's kind of the cool thing about a lot of Wayne Tebow's artwork is that he adds these really bright, colorful shadows when most artists make their shadows kind of gray and dark. It makes his work really pop. So I'm going through and adding these colorful shadows around. 
Um, I am going to kind of repeat that step around the edges of my pie here. And I'm going to pick some different colors for my shadows here. I'm going to make my pie kind of orangish. So I'm going to start with some orange shadows. And I'm just kind of coloring some dark lines here. And I'm going to add a different color shadow here. Not worried about making it nice and neat. Just want it to be really colorful now. I've kind of started with that really dark value like we did um, on the cream. And then even if I switch colors, I can still continue that pattern of making my values kind of like light, uh, dark, medium, and light. So I'm adding in a medium shadow with my yellow here. And I can even switch colors again and do my lightest value. And if you are blending colors, you want to make sure that when the colors you're blending are going to make um, kind of a nice color. If you blend too many colors, obviously you're going to get a lot of brownish. So I'm going to repeat those steps with some different colors for my crest here. I'm going to do some kind of bright shadows around the edges, pressing really hard with with my crayon adding that dark value. And since my pie crest goes all the way down, I'm gonna continue this all the way down here. And then add kind of a medium value, even though it's a different color. and then a really light value. And when I'm doing this light value, I might even kind of like scribble color a little bit. Just fill in a tiny bit, maybe not fill it in all the way. All right, so I'm gonna work on my drips down here and add in my shadows on my drips. Now this will be a little more complicated because I've got that pattern in there. So I'm going to skip over any of those polka dots there. Color my medium value. And then on this one, I'm gonna use the same crayon to do my light value. And again, I'm gonna color around my polka dots. I want those to be a different color. All right. I'm going to add a really light value to this top slice or the top layer of my slice here and a darker value to the bottom. Let's see. And with the layers on your slice, you can do all kinds of fun things. You can add patterns, you could do different colors, you could make it look like it's marbled or rainbow stripe, but you know, keep it bright and colorful. All right, now I do need to color in my polka dots here. You can even add shadows to those too if you wanted to. And then my fruit on top, I haven't colored that yet either. And I'm going to try to make those look 3D as well by adding some shadows. So my cherry, I'm going to add a shadow, dark shadow on the bottom here, and then kind of shade medium and light. And then at the top there, I'll leave a little highlight so it looks shiny. And I can do something similar with my blueberries here.
All right, now I'm ready to add a little bit of color to my plate and my background. So on my plate, I'm gonna leave it kind of mostly white, but I am going to add different colors, almost like rainbow colors here, around the edges where I put those black lines, different colors of shadows. And on this outside edge, I might do a little bit of shading Kind of go around and but I'm going to keep adding different colors to keep it really colorful. Okay, I'm going to go all the way around here, but then we're going to add a really big cast shadow. It's going to be kind of neat. So a cast shadow is where your object is blocking light. So my cast shadow is gonna be kind of coming out from the sides of my plate. So I wanna pick kind of a darker color. I would stick with cool colors. Blues and purples are really good for this. And kind of starting here at the tip and going towards the edge, I'm gonna draw in kind of a diagonal line. And then I'm gonna fill in all of this section. Now here at the top, I wanna to start like maybe halfway up the cake, the side of the cake here, and go diagonal towards the top. And you are still going to see these lines from the plate showing through. That's okay. We do want that. But I'm going to go through, and I'm going to color really dark here with my crayon. And I, you can switch colors. You can do, you know, different blues and purples. But I would stick with kind of dark, cool colors, because cool colors do tend to kind of look like they're in the background, like they're receding. Warm colors probably wouldn't have the same effect. And I'm kind of blending them together as I'm coloring this big cast shadow here. I'm gonna make it a little darker right around the edges of my cake here. So it really looks like a real shadow. By layering my crayons, I can create that effect. And then the last place where I need a little bit of shadow is going to be on my horizon line. And I'm going to do the same thing I did on the plate. I'm going to add really bright colors, just kind of on the edges to give it a little pop of color. And now my pop art uh, pie slice is complete. For my very last step, I'm going to go through with my Sharpie marker now, my thicker marker, and I'm just going to kind of define the outer edges of my pie with a bold, thick black line. And if you didn't have a Sharpie to work with, um, you could always do this with a black crayon or a pencil, even a regular marker. But I'm just kind of going through and deciding where I want bolder lines. I'm gonna do the outside edges of my pie. I'm also gonna do just this bottom edge of my drippy goo cream here. And then I'm also gonna do my crest. I think my crest needs an extra bold line there. And you can make it even thicker in some places by coloring it in if you feel like you need a bolder line. And then I'm also gonna do my horizon line. Anywhere else you see that you think, hmm, that would look better if it had a thicker line, go ahead and add it in. I think that's all the places I want my bold line. So now I am finished.